Hey everyone, uh, <clears throat> had a little uh, problem with the other one, so I am, um, I just opened up a new one, hopefully you guys are all there, looks like one of you are on. Wait for a couple more of you guys to get on here. All right, guys. Well, um, I am going to get going on this lecture here. Um, hopefully, some of you guys will log in here shortly. I'm going to make a little post on the classroom. So make sure people know to come to this if they can. Um, but uh, thank you guys for uh, coming in, for those of you who are in. Uh, we're going to go over the marketing mix here uh, for the first uh, part of this. Uh, we're not going to spend too much time on that before you guys do your, um, before you guys get into your uh, activity for today. So basically we're supposed to give you guys, um, you know, some lecture and then some work time to do different things but um, basically uh, you know I had to change this class up a little bit and it'll still be fine you'll still get the knowledge uh, to uh, help propel you into the other marketing and business classes um, so we're gonna start today with the marketing mix and I'm gonna post these slides um, on Google Classroom after this and after this lesson, after you watch this lesson, then um, you're going to go into Google Classroom. There will be an activity for you to do. And it'll be due, um, I think, you know, tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon by the time the next class posts, which will be pretty much 2 o'clock every single day. Uh, we'll do a little check-in uh, every day to make sure that, you know, you guys are uh, working on stuff. So... Uh, basically, we're going to go through the marketing mix, and I'm going to put you guys into uh, food truck groups. And you guys are going to have to actually, you know, while you're at home, you're going to have to communicate with your partner, um, whoever that ends up to be, and work on developing a food truck idea and a plan. And it's all it's all pretty intuitive. We did it last semester, so you'll just we'll walk through uh, food truck, um, like setting up a food truck and. How much it costs how to promote it and things like that but this lesson right here and the one tomorrow is kind of how you're going to um, uh, it'll give you just uh, another couple tools to do it so you're not going into a blind mode. anyway so um, let me bring up some slides here um, if you guys have any questions or whatever hit the chat you guys also have my um, tell you guys all have my cell phone number so you can text me um, at any time if you have any questions or give me a call um, if I don't pick up right away um, obviously um, I'll get to you I'll get to you as, as quickly as I can all right so let me bring up some slides here all right so we're gonna start here with the marketing mix all right so Think about this. Think about what your favorite brand is, right? So, like, in hockey, I know um, my favorite brand of skates is Bauer, um, or I use a Bauer hockey stick. Um, my favorite type of shoes is Sperry, right? Like, 
I'm a sailor. I like Sperry. Um, the clothes I wear for sailing, they're all Helly Hansen um, clothing. Um, so I'm very, like, I stick to brands that I feel comfortable with and, um, and trust um, with their performance. And, uh, you know, that, that's a, it takes a long time for people to get to know a brand and, and trust them. For instance, right now, like I'm shooting this um, on a Mac computer, on an Apple computer. Now I'm using my Sony camcorder. Um, I'm using Cam Link um, software and OBS software in order to stream this. So these are all brands. These companies have built up that that brand image in order so that you trust them and that you um, that you um, keep going back to them. You know why do I keep going back to Taco Bell? every day when Taco Bell was open because I loved it. <laughs> I trusted it and that was the brand, right? Like, yeah, I'd mix it up with some McDonald's here and there, but man, Taco Bell or like Habanero's Burritos. I love Habanero's Burritos. That's a brand. When someone says, let's go to Hobbs, everyone knows what you're talking about. Okay, so, and that's all done through marketing, right? Um, so the process of marketing is uh, developing and promoting and distributing distributing products to satisfy Customers' needs and wants. Simply put, to bring the buyer and the seller together. Okay, so if you click this link right here, and I'll post these slides up a little bit later in the classroom. Um, you click this right here, it brings you to this 42 best-selling Amazon products for 2000 and um, 2020. Okay, so if you look at here, um, you know this is all on it. Amazon, this is uh, from Good Housekeeping, um, but um, we look at this like crossbody, number one, crossbody bag with tassel, right? And immediately, the first thing I see is Meghan Markle, right? So she's essentially a brand, right? Or this company is using um, her as a brand. Um, microfiber sheets, you know, all these different, all these different products they serve a purpose. We just kind of click through here, just scalp care brush. Apparently there's a, you know, every single product is, I guess, created to solve a problem. And it's the person who's marketing it, um, it is their job you know, like to get it out, right? to connect the seller, the person who manufactures it, to the buyer. Get back in here. All right, so what, what did these different products uh, fill a need or a want for? Uh, like the, uh, the hair scrubbing brush, or the or the, the brush, right? Like, so my daughter has really long hair and she's 12 and I want a brush for her that will get out the tangles, right? That's a need and that's a, or a want, um, depending upon how you look at it. You have to take a look at what you, uh, you have to take a look at what problem do they solve, right? And that's, that's a, a marketer's role is to communicate that. Research and so marketers research and develop new products. They select a name, they select packaging. Um, they determine where the products will be sold and the price of the product. All right. So, how do companies benefit? Uh, marketing bridges the gap between buyers and sellers, adding value to a product. Uh, this value. Value is also called utility or reasons to buy the product. So if we go back to this slide right here. So um, I am going to give you guys a little tutorial here on, okay, so this right here. I bought this uh, a couple days ago in the grocery store, right? This is the brand Tostitos, right? So this is delicious. It's a uh, salsa con queso medium Tostitos dip made with real cheese. Um, Tostitos, very famous brand, right? Like, if I'm going to buy chips, I'm going to, you know, one of the things, like, I got some Tostitos. Oh, that's great. Some people like other brands. 
Some people like um, different types of chips, but this is someone spent a long time to develop this product, this cheese queso, for this uh, salsa con queso, right? The packaging, like what, how big of a package, how, what the colors they use, what words do they use? On this it says, made with real cheese, period. Awesome, period. Someone came up with that, right? Um, we have, uh, it says right here, made with real cheese. Um, medium, you know, someone came up with medium, hot, mild, fire, uh, stuff like that. They wanted it to be a clear, um, a clear jar, you know, so that you could see it, so you could see what, what it is in there. And then someone came up with chips. Now, these are old Dutch chips, right? So this is my lunch for today, by the way. Um, they are blue corn chips, like that's supposed to be better, right? Um, they're made with whole grain, uh, stone ground corn. They're like they're not ground by a machine, they're, they're ground by, by a stone, right? So that makes it better. Um, they're restaurant style, okay? Like, does that really make a difference if they're restaurant style? Um, I do know that they're delicious. I picked these over Tostitos because, well, I like the taste of them, okay? So I'm going to open this up. This is lunch, all right? Yummy. So I know, like, if I, when I was going through the aisles the other day, and I was picking out food for this, uh, for this stuff that we're going through right now, I was like, I want chips. So I got these. And then how did I know that I wanted this? It was placed right next to it. This is all has to do with marketing and the mix. Delicious. All right. Get some more of that later. Alright, we'll go back to the slides here real quick. Okay, so they research and develop the new products. They select a name and packaging. They do advertising and they determine where the products will be sold. The, so the chip, right? You're in the chip aisle and you see all the chips. I didn't go to like the specific cheese sauce, um, cheese sauce aisle. I all I had to do was look right, like two feet, and I saw the stacks of cheese sauce. Right, that is placed there by someone who studies marketing, who knows that if Ronnie Hall walks into a store and he picks out chips, tor like tortilla chips, he is going to want um, some cheese queso, right? Um, the product price, is it $500? Is it $2? Is it $3? People in marketing do analytics in order to figure out what the price is. What does it cost to make? How much do we have to spend to advertise it? How much do we need to, um, how much do we need to continually supply? Do we need a sales force? Do we need someone on the ground to sell this cheese sauce? Or can we just ship it to stores and think that people will like it? Do we need to do have like set up tasting booths? How do companies benefit? Okay, so how does Tostitos benefit um, with this? They have to, so marketing bridges the gap between the buyers and the sellers. We know this. They have to make sure that we understand the value, right, and the reasons to buy this product. Um, for instance, like for me to buy this product, like I'm, I love this. I love this stuff, and and they know that. They know that average people like like stuff like this. They like salsa, or they like French onion dip, or they like cheese sauce. Like you, they just they they have it figured out. All right, so the marketing concept. Businesses must satisfy the customer's needs and wants in order to make a profit. If this cheese sauce tastes like garbage, I'm not going to buy it, right? If I, they could put it out into, you know, they could sell it for a dollar, right? And if it, and put it next to, you know, the toast, the tortilla chips and 
They could have a guy there shaking your hand and saying, buy this stuff. But at the end of the day, if it does not satisfy my need of like, I need something that tastes good and I want something that tastes good and to complement my chips, they're not going to make a profit because they're not going to sell any. To do this, you have to separate the consumer from customer and find your actual market. All right. So within the marketing concept, you have to identify the customers, um, identify the customers uh, they want to serve and understand their needs. You have to develop the products that will satisfy the customers to complete these activities at a profit, right? Do you have a favorite restaurant to eat or a favorite store to shop at? They understand the needs and the wants to keep you as their customer. The marketing strategy, it's a two-step process in order to identify your target market. You have to identify, you have to, it, your market has to be clearly identified group of customers with needs that the businesses want to satisfy. You have to develop the marketing mix in order to complement that. You need four elements to design and to meet those needs of the consumers in that target market. So, we've all heard of things like demographics, right? Okay, so, to identify your target market, you have to figure out who will purchase your product, um, who is in your audience, the age range, the gender, occupation, income range, ethnicity, marital status. Guys, these chips are so good. Geographic area, educational lifestyle. So, any one of you guys to write in the comments, okay? Write in the comments right now. Um, something, um, give me, let's get a product. Someone give me a product. Someone write in the comments, uh, any product and we'll talk about it. We'll talk about who that product, what that product would be good for. We got a 20 second leg, so, um, I'm just going to eat some chips real quick while you guys figure that out. Anyone, anyone? Give me a product. No one else? There's 12 of you watching this. No one wants to give me a product? You just type over in the comments here. A water bottle. Aiden, thank you very much, Aiden. Awesome. Baseball bat. Shoes. Awesome. Thank you, guys. All right, so let's go first with the water bottle. So a water bottle. I think... Um, do I have a water bottle? Let's find it. So I have this water bottle right here, City Minona water bottle. Who would want to buy this water bottle? Who do you think would buy this water bottle? Okay, it's plastic, a little flimsy. It was actually given to me by free. So the target market might actually be for this product. Big companies or cities that want to um, that want to give away something for free because it's not like a substantial one. Like I have a substantial water bottle, like you all do the the hydro flask, whatever. Those are substantial, right? No one's giving those away for free. Who, if if we have a hydro flask water bottle, who would those be the target market for? Young people like yourselves who look at that as a status symbol. You're not going to see a 40-year-old um, business guy or businesswoman probably carrying around a hydro flask and showing it off to everyone. I'm I'm not going to be their target market. And, you know, we don't like to look at things and, like, say, well, these people do this or these people that like that, like as far as stereotyping. But in business, you, can't, you have to take a look at 
what the trends are and what people buy. For instance, I play hockey. I don't play uh, baseball. Dylan, um, you play baseball, right? Like you're gonna have a baseball bat. You're gonna be you're gonna be that person. You are um, 15 years old, and you are the target market for a baseball bat. Like that's just who you're. Who's gonna buy it? You know, uh, is an 80 year old man going to buy a baseball bat? Probably not. What about someone who lives where it snows all year round? Like if you live in the Arctic Circle, you're probably not going to buy a baseball bat. That's geography. All right, so um, jeans. Um, I buy a pair of jeans, but I buy a specific type of jeans. Not very expensive jeans and jeans that can, you know, last a long time. Whereas... Um, Allie, like, I'm not saying you, or but maybe some of your friends or someone that you know in the high school, they're going to be marketed towards different types of jeans, right? Like, <laughs> toilet paper, I love it. Different types of jeans, such as um, if you, you know, ripped jeans, right? No one's going to sell me a pair of ripped jeans, but they're going to sell your generation ripped jeans, toilet paper. Everyone uses toilet paper that's like over two years old, right? But who's actually going to buy the toilet paper? I'm not going to buy it. Like I'll buy toilet paper, but my daughter's not going to like ask for toilet paper because she's just going to like think that it's going to be there. Maybe people are going to change. Maybe the demographics are going to change on toilet paper. Maybe everyone's going to want toilet paper. Hey, did you go to the store and get toilet paper? Because we might run out, right? So everyone might be asking for that product now. So along with the slides, um, let's go back to the slides here. So we look at the age range, the gender, the occupation, income range, education, marital status, right? Like marital status, um, how would that affect you know, someone's buying things. Um, well, I'm not going to book a, um, a wedding event if I'm already married. But if I'm 25 to 35 and I'm single and I'm going to get married in the next year, I'm going to, like a marketer is going to find me. They are going to do the research and figure out where I am, where they can market me to, where they can find me to market to. All right, so in the marketing mix, there are four elements, okay? And if you guys can write this down, that's great. Write these down, okay? Product, place, sorry, product, price, place, and promotion, the four Ps, okay? I have the product, this cheese sauce. I have the price, it's $4. The place, right next to the chips in the grocery store. Promotion, I'm going to make this a wild display and I'm also going to put up like ads, right? Like where are some other ads, where are, what are some other things that uses use ads in order to uh, promote them? Like, um, let me see here. So if I, let's say I have, um, Josh, if, if I am selling sweatshirts, all right, and I want to get to you guys, where would I go? Like where, how would I market to your generation? I have really cool sweatshirts, and I think you guys are going to really like them. I want to get that information to you. Where am I going? Probably on like Instagram or TikTok now, um, Facebook, Facebook's more my generation. Yes, yeah, some of you guys are on Facebook, but you are scrolling through Instagram and you're scrolling through TikTok and whatever other apps that you guys haven't you know, told us about yet. Um, you're going to be at sporting events, right? I want to, I if I'm selling some really neat sweatshirts, like 
um, for the Bucks, I might be outside a Bucks game or I might be in a Bucks game. Um, so it's all about like where the place is, right? So you have the product, you have the price, right? It's got to be an attractive price. I'm not going to pay $100 for this, but I may pay 4 or 5 or $6 for this depending upon what type of benefit I think I'm going to get out of it. And then you have um, the place and the promotion. And how are you going to promote it? Right? If, if, you, if you don't have good promotion, if you don't have that stuff, it's, it's not going to work. All right, let's get back into these slides here. And I really appreciate all of you guys uh, sticking around here and watching this. Um, this is going to help you do your assignment tonight. All right, so um, this is a sample target market. Advanced white toothpaste. Um, so Arm & Hammer paid a ton of money. They developed this product, and what they figured out is that if you are the age of 36 to 50, your gender was female, you made between 30000 and 50000 your marital status was married with children, you lived in a big city, you were Caucasian or white, you had a college degree, and your hobbies were running sports and being active, you're going to want to buy this product. They narrowed it down to that, and that's who they are going to market to. All right, so this, with your given product, develop a, a marketing mix. That's what you're going to do a little bit later. We're going to do a few more slides here, guys, and then I'm going to let you guys work um, on your next thing. All right, so we're gonna get through. We're gonna get through a few more here. So, product. What item are you guys are you guys gonna want to offer? Right. What 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 is it gonna what needs are gonna is it gonna satisfy? What price do you think people will pay for that? And what's the method of payment? If I'm buying a car, I might not use all cash. I might have to go to a bank and get a loan. Right. So that. That has a lot to do with it as well. The place. Locations where the products are sold. I'm not going to buy this cheese dip at, um, what do you call it, at like a uh, um, car dealership. I'm not going to buy a car at a grocery store. So you got to figure out where is your product actually going to be sold. What makes sense with that? Um, promotion. The me or promotion. Methods used to com um, use communicated to communicate information to customers in order to encourage purchases and increase satisfaction. Okay? So, you need to figure out each one of those four. Let's get, let's get down to the product, okay? You need a good product. You need a good brand name, you need, or you need to come up with a good brand name. You need attractive packaging, right? Like, you can't sell a Rolex out of a paper bag. Just not going to work. You need to figure out what accessories you can sell with that. You guys all have phones. What are the accessories that come with it? You have the case. You have the earbuds. You have the chargers. You have apps that go along with it. Any good product will have add-on accessories to that. My chips. My chips, essentially, the cheese dip is an add-on accessory. And services. What services will it provide? Right, product, um, a product comes, you know, in in many different forms. Maybe you're a tax, maybe you're an accountant, and you service, you do tax, a tax service, right? Like, that's essentially a product. How do you package yourself? If you're a t if you do taxes, are you gonna wear a sweatshirt and baggy sweatpants? No, you're gonna package yourself like a professional with a with a coat and tie. In order to do that, you got to get, you got to do some market research. You got to figure out what makes the world tick. What problems do you need to solve? Marketers gather information from consumers. They do research and development. In order to do product development, um, they got to be. They're usually generated within a company. Engineers, scientists, researchers develop a model. So, for instance, Apple. They develop. Um, these different products, the watch, the glasses, the iPad, the iPhone, 
the iMac, the iMac Pro, the, you know, MacBook Pro Lite, you know, pink version, right? They, these are all developed by engineers and scientists and researchers and people who crunch numbers. Don't think if you're going to be in business that you're not going to have to crunch numbers. You're going to have, like, if you want to be good in business, you have to go out there and do your research and find out what product you need. All right. So marketing research. It's based on input from past customers, future customers. What's good? What's bad? What needs to be improved? You know, the the Sony A7 III that I'm using right now as far as like the video on this, this is uh, like the fourth version of this camera, right? And they keep the researchers keep going back. What else do we need? What can we add? Then a place. What distribution? How do we distribute this? And in what businesses will the product be sold? Right, so someone makes this cheese sauce, then they package it, and then they put it on a truck, and they put it, they ship it to a distribution center. And then that distribution center sends it out to all the different stores. They put it on a another truck, and they send it to to Pick and Save or Metro Market or the Piggly Wiggly or CVS or sometimes you'll see it in gas stations. How is that distributed? What transportation methods will be used? How will your product be packaged and protected? I can't just, you know, dump a bunch of these glass jars in a bag. I have to package them in boxes that so the product remains safe and will get from the, the second that cheese sauce is made to the second it hits your lips. Everything has to, that cheese sauce has to be protected. What price? What price? are consumers compare prices and satisfaction they on what they um what they believe will happen so like i pick dutch mill because it's a little bit less expensive than um than tostitos right like why am i going to pick an escalate over a tahoe why am i going to pick a a mercedes over a bmw why am i going to you know do different things if you look at the cat, the Escalade and the Tahoe example, that's the same vehicle essentially. It's just different packaging, right? Like the guts are kind of all the same. Yeah, the Escalade might have a little bit bigger engine, a little bit you know comfier seats that this that and the other, but essentially they're the same vehicle built in the same frame, right? You might get a little bit better t um, tires. Um, Toyota and Lexus, uh, Nissan and Infiniti, they're all the same as well. All right, so you got to take a look. Like my satisfaction will not be better if I get an Escalade over a Tahoe. It won't. Like if I had a Nissan or an Infiniti, though, yeah, I might go Infiniti or a Toyota or a Lexus. I don't know. Toyotas are pretty neat these days, but you know what? Lexuses are also pretty sharp. Same vehicle. All right, role of pricing. You have to cover costs. You have to generate profit. You set the price um, that is viewed by uh, consumers as a good, right? You, they don't just set prices willy-nilly, all right? Even when there's a sale, there's a reason for that sale. There's a reason for that to, like, take shape at that price. Um, I can't sell this jar of cheese sauce for $10. It just won't work. Maybe I could sell 10 for 10 but I'm not going to be able to sell one for 10 I can sell one for maybe $4. That, for me, would be a benefit. But the person, my next-door neighbor, they might say, I wouldn't pay more than $2 for that, or I wouldn't pay more than $0.50 for that. You'd have to give it to me for me to actually put that in my mouth. That's absolutely, right? If it's too high, your competitors will cut you out. If it's too low, prices can't sustain the costs and profits. All right, so... Other factors that influence pricing, the quantity that's purchased for by a customer. My favorite thing to eat when I was a kid, and you guys are probably, um, you guys might be able to relate to this, but my favorite thing to eat when I was a kid were Jack's pizzas. I love, like, pepperoni Jack's pizza. Like, I could eat one a day my entire, like, my entire time. So... When my parents used to go to the store, they used to buy, they, it used to be like five for $10, right? Like five Jack's Pizza for, for $10. And then they'd wait, like the sales would go on like 
they'd stop and you'd kind of like go back and like, yeah, I might need one Jack's pizza or whatever. But when it was, when it would go to like five for $10, they're scooping them up because I just love to eat them. They're great. At ta- Taco Bell or at Taco John's, if you buy the 10 pack, it's less per unit. It's less per taco. All of this, all of this type of stuff is made and generated by marketing people, by people that do marketing, that research, that crunch the numbers, that do spreadsheet upon spreadsheet on, upon spreadsheet. A lot of people think marketing is just like, I'm just going to come up with a silly idea to sell this cheese sauce and yay, it's great. But it's not. It's more than that. It's it's such a cool like function of business and businesses cannot like cannot function without it. They have to do it. All right, let's get back to you. Switch here. Or this uh, thing. Um, the level of co- customer service that's offered. Uh, if the product's fragile. Number of businesses in the channel distribution. Um, if I, I make, I, I'm the competitor for this, but I'm the local competitor. I make this in Madison, Wisconsin, in my kitchen in Madison, Wisconsin. Okay? And I am competing against this. Right, this cheese sauce has to do so much more to get to my customer's mouth, right? Like Tostitos has to do so much more and pay so much more money for that to get to someone else's mouth than I do if I just make it in my kitchen and bring it to a store and say sell it, right? But they're going to be able to buy their products in order to make this cheese sauce a lot, um, a lot less expensively because of the quantity that they can buy for all the cheeses and the vegetables and all the bad stuff that's in there, right? Or me, I have to like kind of buy a little bit at a time to make sure that I don't completely, you know, wreck my cash position in my business. So I can, I, I'll, our prices might actually kind of be the same, even though they're paying so much more. This guy has to go into so many different, like, I don't know, shipping containers and, through people's hands, all that stuff. This this guy travels very far. For me, if I made my stuff, I would just like run it down the block to Century. And it's in the store. That cost me nothing, right? Um, promotion. The marketing tool used to communicate with customers to persuade them uh, to purchase the products. Okay. Yeah. Like how 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 do I know about this? Where is it being promoted? How is it being promoted? How do I know to buy an iPhone instead of an Android? How do how do I know to um, buy a Mac instead of an HP? It's all about promotion, and you see it all over the place. All right, so this is we're gonna end right here. Um, I'm gonna post an assignment on Google Classroom, and you're going to. Uh, you're going to pick any product that you're familiar with. You can go on Alibaba.com if you want, or pick any product that you're familiar with, okay? Whether it's the shoes that you're wearing, whatever it is. And I want you to list the product, okay? Like the new features, the changes that have happened from this year to last year. I want you to list the price, the place where you found it at, the other places also that you can also get it at, and how it was promoted. How did you know about it? I want you to figure out um, what that is. I want you. I want you to write down you know, where that is. So let me just get back to this slide right here. This is what you're going to be doing. And then we are going to um, come back with this. I'm going to read these tomorrow. I'm going to read these tomorrow. We're going to go through some of them and finish the rest of the slides for the marketing mix. Um, Thank you guys very much for um, hanging out with me today um, and doing this. I know, you know, you guys are probably... Um, a little stressed out. I hope your families are doing well. I hope you're doing well. Honestly, you have my cell phone number. Like, if you need cheese sauce, I got cheese sauce. Um, you know, if you need, you know, someone to talk to, make sure you're talking to your families. Make sure you're talking to your relatives and stuff like that. Um, but I, I'm proud of you guys for going through all this stuff with us. I miss you guys dearly. I wish so much that we we're in the classroom right now. And I know sometimes when we're in the classroom, it might seem boring or whatever but man I am really appreciating you guys like more than anything I'm appreciating um every single one of 
you know, the things that you do, even if you don't watch, like listen to me right away or whatever, like I don't care anymore. I just want to be with you guys in the classroom. Um, I hope, you know, this ends soon. If it doesn't, it's okay. I'm going to be right here. We're still going to be learning. We're still going to be pushing things. We're still going to be driving forward. We're all going to get together and we're going to get through all this. Okay. I promise you guys that. So look at classroom. Um, once again, you guys have access to me whenever you want it. And I hope to see you guys soon. And let me know if there's anything I can do for you. All right. All right. Have a great, have a great day, guys.